The Murder on the Links Agatha Christie Read by Nematola Jumaboyev Chapter 1 A Fellow Traveller I believe that a well-known anecdote exists to the effect that a young writer determined to make the commencement of his story forcible and original enough to catch and rivet the attention of the most blouse of editors, panicked the following sentence. Hell, said the Duchess. Strangely enough, this tale of mine opens in much the same fashion, only the lady who gave utterance to the exclamation was not a Duchess. It was a day in early June. I had been transacting some business in Paris and was returning by the morning service to London, where I was still sharing rooms with my old friend, the Belgian ex-detective, I could pour off. The Calais Express was singularly empty. In fact, my own compartment held only one other traveller. I had made a somewhat hurried departure from the hotel and was busy assuring myself that I had duly collected all my traps when the train started. Up till then, I had hardly noticed my companion, but I was now violently recalled to the fact of her existence. Jumping up from her seat, she let down the window and stuck her head out, withdrawing it a moment later with a brief and forcible ejaculation. How? Now, I'm old-fashioned. A woman, I consider, should be womanly. I have no patience with a modern, nority girl who jesses from morning to night, smokes like a chimney, and uses language which would make a Billingsgate fishwoman blush. I looked up now, frowning slightly, into a pretty, impudent face surmounted by a rakish little red hat. A thick cluster of black curls hid each ear. I judged that she was little more than seventeen, but her face was covered with powder, and her lips were quite impossibly scarlet. Nothing abashed. She returned my glance and executed an expressive grimace. Dear me, we've shocked the kind gentleman, she observed to an imaginary audience. I apologize for my language, most unladylike, and all that, but oh lord, there is reason enough for it. Do you know, I've lost my only sister. Really? I said politely. How unfortunate. He disapproves, remarked the lady. He disapproves utterly of me, and my sister, which lasts since I'm fair, because he hasn't seen her. I opened my mouth, but she forced towards me. Say no more. Nobody loves me. I shall go into the garden and eat worms. Boo-hoo! I'm crushed. She buried herself behind a large comic French paper. In a minute or two, I saw her eyes still slowly peeping at me over the top. In spite of myself, I couldn't help smiling. And in a minute, she had tossed the paper aside and had burst into a merry peal of laughter. Ha ha! I knew you weren't such a mud as you looked, she cried. Her laughter was so infectious that I couldn't help joining it. Though, I hardly cared for the word mutt. The girl was certainly all that I most disliked. But there was no reason why I should make myself ridiculous by my attitude. I prepared to unbend. After all, she was decidedly pretty. There, now we're friends, declared the minx. Say you were sorry about my sister. I'm desolated. That's a good boy. Let me finish. I was going to add that. Although I'm desolated, I can manage to put up with her absence very well. I made a little bow, but this most unaccountable of damsels frowned and shook her head. Cut it out. I prefer the dignified disapproval stunt. Oh, your face, not one of us, it said. And you were right there, though, mind you, it's pretty hard to tell nowadays. It's not everyone who can distinguish between a demi and a duchess. There now, I believe I've shocked you again. You've been dug out of the backwoods you have. Not that I mind that. We could do with a few more of your sort. I just had a fellow who gets fresh. It makes me mad. She shook her head vigorously. What are you like when you're mad? I inquired with a smile. A regular little demi. Don't care what I say or what I do, either. I nearly did a chap in once. Yeah, really. He'd have deserved it, too. Italian blood I've got. I shall get into trouble one of these days. Well, I begged. Don't get mad with me. I shan't. I like you. Did the first moment I set eyes on you. But you looked so disapproving that I never thought we should make friends. Well, we have. Tell me something about yourself. I'm an actress. No, not the kind you're thinking of. Launching at the subway covered with jewelry and with their photograph in every paper saying how much they love Madame So and So's face cream. I've been on the boards since I was a kid of six, tumbling. I beg your pardon. I said pardon. Haven't you seen child acrobats? Oh, understand, I'm American born, but I've spent most of my life in England. We got a new show now. We? My sister and I, sort of song and dance, and a bit of patter, and a dash of the old business thrown in. It's quite a new idea, and it hits them every time there's to be money in it. My new acquaintance leaned forward and discoursed volubly a great many of her tomes, being quite unintelligible to me. 
Yet I found myself evincing an increasing interest in her. She seemed such a curious mixture of child and of woman, though perfectly worldly wise and able, as she expressed it, to take care of herself, there was yet something curiously ingenious in her single-minded attitude towards life, and her whole-hearted determination to make good. This glimpse of a world unknown to me was not without its charm, and I enjoyed seeing her vivid little face light up as she talked. We passed through Amiens. The name awakened many memories. My companion seemed to have an intuitive knowledge of what was in my mind. Thinking of the wall, I nodded. You were through it, I suppose. Pretty well. I was bound at once, and after the Somme, they invalided me out altogether. I had a half-fledged army job for a bit. I'm a sort of private secretary now to N M P. My, that's brainy. No, it isn't. That's really awfully little to do. Usually a couple of hours every day sees me through. It's dull work, too. In fact, I don't know what I should do if I hadn't got something to fall back upon. Don't say you collect bugs. No, I share rooms with a very interesting man. He's a Belgian, an ex-detective. He's set up as a private detective in London, and he's doing extraordinarily well. He's a really very marvellous little man. Time and again, he has proved to be right where the official police have failed. My companion listened with widening eyes. Isn't that interesting now? I just adore crime. I go to all the mysteries on the movies. And when there is a murder, when I just devour the papers. Do you remember the Styles case? I asked. Let me see. Was that the old lady who was poisoned somewhere down in the Essex? I noted. There was Poirot's first big case. Undoubtedly, but for him, the murderer would have escaped scot-free. It was a most wonderful bit of a detective folk. Warming to my subject, I ran over the heads of the affair, walking up to the triumphant and unexpected denouement. The girl listened spellbound. In fact, we were so absorbed that the train drew into Calais station before we realized it. My goodness! Gracious me, cried my companion, where is my pad above? She proceeded to bed up her face liberally and then applied a stick of lip self to her lips. Observing the effect in a small pocket glass and betraying not the faintest sign of self-consciousness. I say I hesitated, I dare say it's cheek on my part, but why do all that sort of thing? The girl paused in her operation and stared at me with undisguised surprise. It isn't as though you weren't so pretty, so that you can afford to do without it, I said stammeringly. My dear boy, I've got to do it. All the girls do. Think I want to look like a little frump up from the country? She took one last look in the mirror, smiled approval, and put it and her vanity box away in her bag. That's better. Keeping up appearances is a bit of a frag. I grant, but if a girl respects herself, it's up to her not to let herself. Cat's like. To this essentially moral sentiment, I had no reply. A point of view makes a great difference. I secured a couple of porters, and we alighted on the platform. My companion held out her hand. Good boy, and I'll mind my language better in future. Oh, but surely you let me look after you on the boat. Main be on the boat. I've got to see whether that sister of mine got aboard after all anywhere. But thanks all the same. Oh, but we're going to meet again, surely? I hesitated. I want to meet your sister. We both laughed. That's real nice of you. I'll tell her what you say. But I don't fancy we'll meet again. You've been very good to me on the journey, especially after I checked you as I did. But what your face expressed first thing is quite true. I'm not your kind, and that brings trouble. I know that well enough. Her face changed. For the moment, all the light-hearted guy died out of it. It looked angry, revengeful. So goodbye, she finished in a lighter tone. Aren't you even going to tell me your name? I cried as she turned away. She looked over her shoulder. A dimple appeared in each cheek. She was like a lovely picture by a Kreuzer. Cinderella, she said and laughed. But little did I think when and how I should see Cinderella again. И на этих секундах мы заканчиваем с вами наше, так сказать, чтение. Каждый раз я буду читать по эм, одному чаптеру по одной главе, и я надеюсь, я до конца дойду, так сказать, я дочитаю всю эту книгу. Это первый раз, поэтому могут быть какие-то проблемы, потому что 
мой английский еще не позволяет э, понимать полностью всю картину, то есть, и поэтому бывает так, что я могу просто упускать какие-то моменты и просто какие-то важные ключевые моменты, где нужно посмеяться, где нужно просто показать эмоции э, говорящего человека как раз таки в э, книге. Но это все будет меняться со временем, и я надеюсь, с каждой записью качество и передача материала будет улучшаться. Спасибо за внимание.